Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Shabbat Shalom. Y'all were good, didn't you? All the time and all the time, y'all's good. How are y'all? We thank you for your magnificent, wonderful name and the covenant that you have remembered with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you have not forgotten your people, that you have foreknew, including us, in this diaspora. We humbly need, we really truly need the spirit of truth to open up our understandings and give us the ears to hear this message today. Help me, grant me utterance to speak to your people. In the mighty name of Yahshua, we will make sure that we are living examples to bear fruit that sinners who all who have the ears, ears to hear will be converted. Bless all the assemblies from Washington State, Hawaii, Australia, England, India, Africa, all of them, or as far as to New York, down to Florida, and all those, Canada, and we do not know of. Give them the ears to hear, Father. Help break this spirit of Gnosticism that is on this generation. In the mighty name of Yahshua, we bless you for all things. Amen. All right, we got a few letters here we're going to read here for a second. You may be seated, Israel. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, Sister Carol. Shalom, Pastor. Please accept this small offering for the building of Yah's kingdom. I pray our Elohim continues to endow you with his blessings, strengthen you, give you endurance, and may Yah continue to impact his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in you. You are an excellent teacher and pastor, and I pray a long and healthy life for you. Pastor, for someone coming from another assembly where I was taught that tithing was done away with, it was very difficult to delete that teaching from my thoughts. However, I think I have overcome that false teaching. I love to give and help, even though as much as much is demanding of me financially, I have made up in my mind that no longer will I allow anything or anything else to come before helping to build the kingdom of Yah. I used to be dedicated tither in the Christian church, so I will not allow anything to hinder me anymore in giving to Yah's true ministry. My prayer each day is, Father, thank you for giving these hands the power to obtain wealth and for helping in the building up of, our, of your people on this earth. I am grateful for you and the, and the teachings, and please continue to rebu rebuke and reprove. I am constantly checking myself whenever you reprove and rebuke. Once again, thank you for your dedication and your service to Yah's people. Shalom. Now, that's a smart person. They realize that the correction, even though that they hear a man's voice, they realize that the correction is not coming from man. That is a wise person. <clears throat> you know, we stumble over so many words, and yet we do not even understand what our minds have been immersed in. Um, so while she's reading this second letter, y'all need to get yourselves together because y'all gonna feel like that y'all are actually, y'all here gonna be hurting by the time we get finished. I don't mean to, but we, we've got to get it out. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We literally got to get it out. Do you see how string was ignorant, Jill? Yes, yeah. Last night was strenuous. Yeah. You didn't feel that pressing of dumb dumb? Oh, yeah. Mind numbness? You look like. 
You know, I, I really would love to peer into all the lives of, of the people who profess to be the Messiah. I want to see how they live. By their fruit, you should know them. That's what I want to see. Hmm? Elder Spinney, he got to be past the Apostle Paul because he speaks four languages. I mean, if anybody going to speak in tongues, he got it covered. You got it covered, Elder. Don't he got it covered? Like nobody else got it covered more than that now. You covered, brother. My, my, my. Come on with the second letter, sister girl. Dear Pastor Dow, my husband and I have listened to many of your videos for a while now and have felt led to reach out to you. We began our journey of truth in the Israelite faith about three years ago. Yah has given us a wonderful testimony as we grow in faith. We really don't have any others in our family that believe what we believe. Hmm. We do hold a small Shabbat assembly. However, those that attend do not fully have eyes to see as of yet. We wanted to contact you regarding your community. We were instructed to move out of the city by the Most High Yah and have moved to a temporary home and now have to find our own land. We are renting a place in the country now. We would love to visit to get a better understanding of how a true community functions and to fellowship with true Israelites. Also regarding your deliverance services, my dad and my brother both are afflicted with mental illness. My brother has what the world calls schizophrenia. My dad has severe depression, paranoia, anxiety, etc. To the point he can't work because voices tell him to drive his 18-wheeler off the road. Watching your testimonies of deliverances are so encouraging and I feel their lives would be blessed and their minds healed by experiencing the true power of healing through deliverance. We thank you for your time and hope to hear from you soon. And if it's the Father's will, we will hope to visit you all. Shalom. Well, come on down. Because y'all need to see somebody who's doing it right in this generation. Why not straightway? Why not? I mean, y'all heard me all the time say, I'm looking for somebody. I wish somebody would show me how to do it if we're so wrong. You understand what I mean? Because uh, the one thing I do not want to do or be is wrong. Uh, you know, I took an evaluation of life. I said, you know what? Hmm. At every turn of the year, I've came to a conclusion. I'm not going to go back to that year again. It's gone. No do-overs. I would love to have the vitality of 16 at 48. It ain't going to happen, Elder. Are you following me? We are decaying outwardly. But the inward man should be renewed day by day. And um, y'all need to pay attention. You notice how last night the emphasis was really put on Gnosticism again, like I keep telling us about? Has to do with how much knowledge you can amass and intellect. Are you following me? Now, we do need a knowledge and understanding. Are you following me? We really truly need that, but uh, we're going to be busy today. All right? I'm going to try my best to uh, keep it simple, as simple as possible. But we need to hear this so we can understand how, here we go again, our mind operates and functions. That's the reason why it's difficult talking with people today. Because everybody assumes that the information that they're presenting is right. And when you are locked in to your information, you're not open to hear any other information. Like one thing about last night, it proved that I got a lot of people listening to me. Again. Isn't that true? All right. So, I mean, I won't blame you. Ain't nothing else better going on on the Sabbath in the United States of America. I listen to. Hallelujah. All right, let's get started, Israel. Y'all ready? I'm serious. We're going we're gonna to be busy now, all right? Don't let your mind go wandering and stuff because you're going to learn something here today. All right? We're going to learn something here today. All right. Hebrew versus Greek. Hebrew versus Greek. All modern day translations of the scriptures are written from a Western perspective and point of view. English-speaking people are trained to learn and think in the abstract. 
So you speak English, your mind is set to think from a certain perspective. It is abstract in nature. Not from concrete Hebraic model. Scriptures are not Greco-Roman, but the English translation is. Y'all notice how I'm taking this deliberately? Slow? All right. Scriptures are not Greco-Roman, but the English translation is. Therefore, when you read the Bible, you are reading it from a Western perspective. And you understand from a Western perspective. That's the reason why everything is Babylonian. We want to be Hebrews, but we want to function like Greeks. Do you understand? You are flawed. Are you understanding? It means a lot. Do you comprehend? You, the reader, do not know Hebraic words, concepts, and ideals. You understand? Hebraic words, concepts, and ideals have been replaced by abstract ones in the translations we read. And the powers that be know full well that when you take one culture and try to fuse it with another culture, you're going to affect change in the minds. Are y'all getting this? All right? And they're doing it for a particular reason. That's why Jeremiah 3.15 says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Because the Father has not left us. I'm not the only pastor in the world. It says plural, pastors. All right? Again, we, we see this map all the time. We're going to try this again. Over here is the land we're all in. Do y'all see it? No, you don't. You imagine it through your abstract mind. <laughs> you see this concrete. Y'all gonna be all right. Because <laughs> from coming to concrete perspective, you don't see it, but you see it in your mind, but you really don't see it. But you, you know that it's over here even though it's not here. That's confusion. All right? The Bible was written by people who come from this region. This region thinks differently than this region. This region that region, this region, and this region, and this region, and this region. <laughs> Do I have to give y'all the geography of where I'm pointing at? Why? You abstractly know, don't you? Okay. <laughs> All right. These people are the ones who have had the greatest influence on our translations of the scripture. These commandments is what's going to keep us in the good mercies and graces of the Most High Yah through obedience. The Torah and the Tanakh are righteousness. The Apostle Saul knew full well what we we're going to be up against. He knew because he was an emissary of the Most High Yah. You see the revelation from Yahshua Hamashiach himself? He knew. So that's why when he was speaking to these people, all right, he was speaking in such a way that not only it would, his letters would affect these people, but it would also get out to other people. Are you following? Now that's amazing when we're talking about languages and speech, how that 
Cornelius was a man of an Italian. We never hear throughout history that, that um, Peter was a man of diverse languages. We often hear that the Apostle Saul was a man of diverse languages. But yet, the known language of that day in that region, Peter could go to the Italians and the Italians could understand what he's saying. And it's obvious that he had the, to hear something distinct and sound to let him know that these Italians had received something that they had received on the feast day of Pentecost. Because he had just got finished ministering Christ to them and breaking it down. So something had to happen in order to open his understanding. And that was a, that was a nugget for all you people who are listening after the debate because you don't know which way to go. Hopefully this day you will. The Apostle Saul said, beware, that is warned. Lest any man spoil you through, here's this key word right here, philosophy. And vain deceit, that means lies. After tradition, so people are spoiled. Philosophy through lies because of tradition. Of men and after the laws of this world, that's what the word rudiments mean. And not after the Messiah. So you be forewarned that people start having you go off course through philosophy. Are y'all listening? How do you pronounce that word? Synchronism. Syncretism. I'm not good with these words. I'm Hebrew. It's hard for me to get that tongue. Y'all gonna get it now. All right? But I always ask for help with words. I practiced this word for 20 minutes and still can't pronounce it. Me and you in the same club, Brother Darrell. Syncretism. 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 The combination, see people can take, I'm, I'm, they can tell I'm ignorant and unlearned, but I've been with the Messiah. The combination of different Forms of belief or practice. That's what it is. The fusion of two or more originally different inflectional forms. What does all this mean? Syncretism, or how you say it again? Syncretism. Syncretism, I got it. Secretism, I think I do. I can probably read that right there better than I can that. Is the combination of different, often contradictory beliefs while meddling practices of various schools of thought. Syncretism involves the merger, the merger, and the analyzing, an analyzing, is that right? Of several original discrete traditions, especially in theology and mythology of religion. In other words, you take one culture, and we're talking about Hebrew and Greek, and you merge these cultures together, and out of it is what you get, what that word is saying by combining. So what you're looking at in our translations of the Bible, you're looking at a Hebrew culture fused together with Greek thought, and the dominant thought are the ones who translated the Hebraic scriptures. Is that making any sense? So instead of you actually really truly thinking Hebrew, you're thinking Greek. And in that, if you're not told that you have disregarded 4,000 years of the way of perspectives, point of views, and theologies, the way that they believe, in lieu of starting off 60 years of influence that has covered a whole entire span of the Bible, you won't begin to understand why you think and behave a certain way because you automatically assume that you, because of these two cultures being fused together, you automatically assume that you are processing thought the right way. That's why at times we have difficulty trying to wrap our minds around certain passages of, of the Tanakh, and the Barit Kadashah, the renewed covenant. 
All right? Syncretism, thus asserting an underlining unity and allowing for an inclusive approach to other faiths. Syncretism also occurs commonly in expressions of arts and cultures. In other words, you know we all talk about an image is worth a thousand words? It's talking and speaking. Is that right? Known as, what in the world is that word? Electicism. That are pretty good with these words, isn't it? As well as politics. Syncretic politics. Now listen to this. I'm, I'm going to make it simple because I'm going to start putting my words in there so we can understand what these people are saying. All right? All right? Syncretitis thick. Greco-Roman civil religion was a mishmash of collected gods, rituals, and philosophies. Now, you college people, I'm sure you're like, wow. Man, I understand all this. All right? Y'all hear that? Greco-Roman civil religion was a mishmash of collected gods, rituals, and philosophies. Plato, who was Socrates' student. All right? This man has a lot of influence on our present-day culture. See, a lot, of, a lot of people hadn't been told because the Bible is clear that it was yourself who taught the Mizraims or the Mizrites wisdom. Are y'all following me? Yourself, a Hebrew Israelite, taught the Mizrites, the Egyptians, wisdom. The Greeks went to Mizraim and learned their culture and their philosophies. And they fused what they learned from their culture and philosophies. They kept their gods, their rituals, and their philosophies. That's the reason why from one culture to the next, gods may change names, but people are still worshiping the same gods. Do you understand? Now y'all getting this? So Plato, who was a philosopher, as well as a mathematician in classical Greece, and an influential figure in philosophy. Central in Western philosophy. Central in what Western. philosophy? Western. What's that word again? Western. Western philosophy. Where are we at? In the West. What is our school of thought process? So we, in essence, when we go back to this father of philosophy, Plato, all of us have in our minds Western philosophies. He was Socrates' student and founded the academy in Athens, which we'll see that the apostle Saul went there. Oh, y'all listen to me. We'll see that he went there. The first institution of higher learning in the Western world, along with Socrates and his most famous student, Plato, helped to lay the foundations of Western philosophy and science. Alfred North Whitehead once noted the safest general characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it consists of a series of footnotes to Plato. Meaning everything that they come up with, Plato's, they, they, they're, they're all discerning and drawing is from Plato's mind. Do you understand for instance, in the Bible, Yahweh is the author. The prophets are custodians. Are you following me? But in Greek philosophy, Plato is the author. Platonic model of love and relationship, intimate and affectionate, but not Sexual. That's where you get into feelings and emotions. All right? Their relationship is purely platonic, confined to 
Words. Most of you, I talk, I talk with stuff like this all the time. For instance, if a man can make you women feel a certain way, you think you loved. You forget all about the function. Is he doing what the Torah says, which is provide? Are you listening? Is he providing? Is he protecting? Is he there for you? As opposed to his words make me feel good. See the difference? One is abstract and the other is concrete. Y'all hear it? So this platonic model is confined to words, theories, or ideas and not leading to what kind of action? Practical action. Manifest something that you could see. All right, y'all doing all right? No man or woman left behind. Abstract. Abstract thinking is a level of thinking about things that is removed from the facts. Key word. Removed from the facts of the here and now. And from a specific examples of things or concepts being thought about. Abstract thinkers are able to reflect on events and ideals and on attributes and relationships separate from the objects that have those attributes or share those relationships. You see your mind in this. The majority of the way now, I'm going to try to use things that will help us to understand as we go forward, all right? T -t Today, we, we base every relationship that we have with anyone on how we think. Based on past experiences rather than the function of today and the way we're living. Something said? Are you following me? That's how we do. Reminiscing. Concrete. Thought derived from the senses which reflect experience. What does concrete do? It reflects on what? Experience. Let's go back over here to abstract for us. The abstract things reflects on events of what? Ideals. They said something, it gave me this ideal or impression. On attributes of relationships. Separate from the objects that have the attributes or shared those relationships, contrast that with concrete, thought derived from the senses, which reflect experience rather than abstract reasoning. You see the difference? A concrete thinker can count three cookies. A more abstract thinker can think about numbers. A concrete thinker can recognize that John likes Betty. A more abstract thinker can reflect on emotions like affection. Concrete thinking. Thinking of objects or ideas as specific items rather than as an abstract representation of a more general concept as contrast with abstract thinking. For example, perceiving a chair and a table as individual useful items and not as members of a general class of furniture. See, everybody else, uh, 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 an ab abstract thinker would say, man, look at the furniture. But a concrete thinker will come in and say, that's a nice chair. And look at that table. Now this chair, I like the way this chair looks, but it doesn't go well with this table, concrete in action and form. Abstract generalization. All right? The terms concrete and abstract 
are also used to suggest how practical or impractical an ideal might be. In this sense, concrete ideas are those that have reverence to action. So concrete ideas have reverence to what? That's why we often hear over and over again, blessing are not only the hearers, but the what? Something reverence to action. Something reverence. See, they couldn't really tap all the scriptures now. Are you following me? We're something reverent to action. The terms of concrete and abstract also used to suggest, oh, did I go back? Okay. Practical and impractical. An idea might be, in this sense, concrete ideas are those reverent to action. E.g. a recipe is concrete because it states how to cook a dinner. A differential equation in, is abstract because it is not tied to action in this way. If I say cook the pie, now you have to figure out how to cook it. But if you have instructions in how to go about cooking it, you're coming from a more concrete form. Again, Colossians 2.8, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain to see how the traditions of men and rumors world now after Christ. Acts 17, 16, listen very closely. This is the mindset we're dealing with. Now, when Paul waited for them at Athens, remember we talk about Athens. His spirit was stirred in him when he saw the whole city only given to what? Because he come from a place where he didn't see all these idols. You leave from the region that they call today, they have renamed the Middle East, to where there's no idols. To uh, up here in Athens, to every time you turn around, there's an idol. Paul's spirit was stirred in him, saying, look at all this. Why? Because he knew what the Torah said. Are you following me? So he's seen that the whole entire city was wholly given over to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue of the Yehudim and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. What do you think he was talking about? Idolatry. You ever notice how Americans are mind numb to idolatry? Because we see it everywhere. It's part of the architect. Matter of fact, we see so much of it, our spirit don't even get stirred in it no more. We don't even get mad at it. Because we realize we're in our enemy's land. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? Understand the mindset. Here's Paul, a Hebrew, going to a greco Roman providence. And they're having a difficult time understanding this man. They cannot see why is this man so stirred up? Why is he making this uproar? Why is he making all this ado? It just doesn't make sense. Not to them. He sees that these people are given over to the worship of many gods. And it's troubling him. The way that the people understood Paul's reaction of being in their homeland is this man is, is, is some type of vain babbling fool. He's here visiting us, but he don't understand how we do things and how we believe. Yet, they are worshipers. Other, some, he seemed to be a beset of of what? Strange gods. Why? He's mentioning a god to them that they're not familiar with. He's talking about Yahweh. Are you following me? The Greeks, they never heard him. They heard of Zeus on Mount Olympus. So he's a beset of over what? Strange doctrines. Strange teachings fall into their ears. What do you think is happening when you're trying to tell? You've been on the side of where Christians are. You're reading the same book that they're reading. Your understanding has been opened. The scales have been removed from your eyes. You're trying to talk to these people, and you are a baboon, literally, to them. They literally just cannot put two and two together to understand because... There's too much philosophy of men in front of them. 
too many traditions in front of them that blocks their mind from hearing what you're saying. So even though they know you, something strange has happened to you, they can't explain it. But they do know that you're different. Are you following me? Now I'm on track, but I'm going to go off track because I got the Holy Spirit ministering to me right now. All right? I'll give you understanding if you will receive. I will give you understanding, all right? Okay? The word soul, the word soul. The Hebrews are not familiar with the word soul. They're familiar with the word spirit. When you go look in the scriptures that is available to us today, the word soul changed only to one place in the scriptures. It changed to, and to give us an understanding of what Greek thought is trying to say to us, it changed to the word creature. Elder Doug, can y'all look up um, in the Strong's back there? Click on the word creature over in Genesis. All right? So we understand from a, from a, a Greco-Roman Western influence, soul, mind, will, emotion, intellect, right? But remember, Yah is a what? Spirit. All right? So we have the word spirit and soul seem like they're almost conflicting. So instead of saying, and let's get a more concrete understanding of the, of the word, because we often hear a, the soul that sin, it shall what? Surely die. Now, since we know that they're really talking about spirit, the spirit never dies. It should, a better translation would be the person that sins shall surely die. Because it is the, it is the spirit, the root ach that is inside of you that is the nemesia or the breath. And then Adam became a living person, which we, in our translation from Western thought, says a living soul. Have you got it, Elder Doug? Huh? All right, read that, Brother Shane. Creature. What it says in the Hebrew. Nefesh. Properly a breathing creature that is animal or abstractly vitality. Used very widely in a literal, accommodated, or figurative sense, bodily or mental. Any appetite, beast, body, breath, creature, ex dead, ex deadly, desire, discontented, contented, jeopardy, in jeopardy, lust, man, me, mind, morality, one, own, person, pleasure, her, him, my, or thy, self, them, yourselves, slay, soul, tablet, they, thing, will, would have it. So you read all that, you hear mind, will, and emotion. If you read all that, you hear everything that has to do with the Greek soul. All right, but in the Hebrew, it's translated creature from the English. Nefesh, creature. All right? So go look up the word soul in the New Testament. It's interesting, isn't it? Hmm? It is interesting. Very interesting. Have you got it? Because remember, Yah is a what? And he breathed. Breathed into Adam. Is that right? And Adam became a living person. We often say a living soul because that's what the translation says in front of us. Read. Suke. Suke. Breath, that is, by implication, spirit. See that? Breath, by implication, what? Spirit. spirit. Abstractly or concretely, the animal sentient principle only. We're going, are you going to get the same definition again? Keep reading. Thus, distinguished on the one hand from, uh, it says, Greek 4151, which is the rational and immortal soul, and on the other, Greek 2222, which is mere vitality, even of plants. These terms thus exactly correspond respectively to the Hebrew 5315 and Hebrew 7307 and Hebrew 2416, meaning heart, life, mind, soul, 
us plus you. You understand? Are you getting this? Confusing, huh? A little bit? That is really pretty simple. Soul is spirit, spirit is soul. Basically, in a nutshell. All right? There ain't no such thing as a holy ghost. A ghost is not a spirit. Even though they'll tell you spirit form, the translation should say Holy Spirit. If we go back to the concrete form of Hebrew, we never read anything about no ghost in no scriptures. It's all, it didn't say, and the ghost was upon Dawid. And the ghost came upon Samuel. Now, you think about ghosts today, we, we're heading toward that time, ain't we? Goose, goblins, and everything else, ain't we? You see what I'm talking about? Well, when you say spirit, Holy Spirit, and don't, not ghosts, think about it for a second. Holy Spirit, Yah's a spirit, it's holy, it's coming from who? Him. It didn't say, and, and uh, the ghost was on the face of the deep. And God... And y'all will breathe the ghost into man, and man became a living ghost. Spirit. You see the reason why I advocate Hebrew, Hebrew all the time? Certain philosophers, Epicurean, Stoics, and counter him. Some say, what would this Bible say? Other, some, he seemed to be a set beset or a strange God. Because he preached unto them Yahshua. They never heard of this Yahshua. And people never heard of Yahshua or the Jesus we preach today. Why? Because all of America is wholly given over to what? Idolatry. They understand their Jesus, the Greek Jesus. But they do not understand the Hebrew Jesus. And what they did was took our name, translated the best way they could in their language. And since we have their translation... I mean, we know that they're trying to talk to the same, talk about the same person that we're talking about, but when you look at them in function, you look at them in application, you look and watch what they do, they cannot be talking about the same Messiah or the Mashiach that we are talking about. Because this one did not come to destroy the law of the prophets. So he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Archibus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, this new teaching whereof you speaketh is. For you bring us certain strange things to our ears. Because you have to understand, the Greeks, they had a plethora of gods. So they want to learn about this new God. They want to hear and then maybe they can put him on a shelf and figure out what authority he's in. What line of the session. You understand what I mean? We would know there of what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to either tell, to tell, or to do what? Hear some new thing. That's why I, I, I tell you, that's why it makes me cringe when I see brothers sitting around and, and trying to come up with new revelations. Because it's the same spirit right here. It's the same spirit that's working. Instead of just go ahead and, and building on what has already been given to us. Because there's nothing new under the sun. They're looking for something else new to tell. And, and eventually they're going to go off into Greek philosophies. That's where they're going to end up at. Do you understand? So they want to hear some new thing. Genesis 4, 6, 34 you remember, yourself is in charge. Second in Mizraim, in command. You already know the account. We're not going to go over there. We're going to deal directly what the subject is at hand. Joseph, Joseph meets his father and gives instructions. And look, yourself is in Mizraim. He's a Hebrew. His Hebrew people are coming from Canaan, from a Hebrew land to Goshen. 
the first thing that Joseph is going to do is school them in how to behave in this country, how to think in this country. When they say to you certain things, you need to answer like this. Because if you answer like this, the wrong thing may happen to you. All right, let's listen. That ye shall say, thy servants trade occupation, job description, what you do, have been about cattle from our youth even to now. Both we and also our fathers. What's wrong with me telling you people to get out of the cities? All you're doing is just, you would ultimately end up doing what your culture is about. What's wrong with that? You get to see a cow, the, cow, the, the children grow up and go, look, cow. They see the cow, <laughs> and they go, poop. And then they see you take the poop and put it in the compost, compost. They put it on the garden. They're like, wow! That's our culture. And you run from it. Rather than coming to it. This is a, the, what their trade, the occupation is being about from their youth. How can you understand Hebraic principles unless you actually go back to restore those, that, that lifestyle? How can you even begin to equate and comprehend how people even thought unless you have these influences around you? Chicken, egg. Not chicken, grocery store. And you can stop with all the stupid arguments which came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, damn it, the chicken came first. I'm talking to a bunch of educated folks and I asked, I asked which one came first, chicken or egg? I ain't getting in this conversation with you. I said, that's something. I said, it's too high for you, isn't it? And the reason why it's too high for you is because you do not believe in the creator of the universe. So I suppose you got hashed out of your mama. Hold oh. on, don't get fed to me. You didn't operate. You didn't give an answer. That's why you have stuff like Easter, where something a pterodactyl flew over the head and and the egg landed in the sea and washed up to the shore, and the people went and sat on it, and out came the Easter bunny. That's some serious philosophy. Notice, the Hebraic servants trade had been about cattle from their youth even to now, both we and also our fathers, that we may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto who? The Egyptians. So you people that are kicking with your Egyptian mindset about us being shepherds, we understand. We understand why we're an abomination unto you. Because of the way your mind thinks. Here's the confusion. They claim to be Israelites, but they act like Egyptians and, and Greeks. And they live like Egyptians and Greeks. For every shepherd is an abomination unto who? Every nation has customs. Remember, the Bible never deals with what race someone is. Scriptures deal with what nation you're from. They confuse the matter by telling you, all right, you're committing miscegenation when a black person marries a white person. That's stupid as hell. It's obvious from the Torah that anybody from any nation can become an Israelite. That's clear cut. And Yahweh don't have a special law for the one that is homeborn, and, a, and then he has another set of laws for the stranger. You'll read over and over, and over again the Hebrews mixing with other people from other nations. Moses, the custodian of the law, married a Midianite and a Cushite. And we knew that some of our people had a problem with it. So Moses had to take care of it himself. So don't tell me 
Marrying someone of another nation is an abomination. No, it ain't. What the abomination is, is when people come from other nations and they keep their strange gods. Were there times that our people were warned, don't go over there? Yeah, because he knew how powerful and how strong the influence of these nations were. Yeah. Yes, sir. But notice these people with Moshe and with Yosef and with um, Abraham and all them, uh, Abraham had an Egyptian or Mizrite, Hagar. They came, they lived, and they followed our laws, our customs, and our mannerisms. Do you understand? That's why most of you don't understand conversion or repentance or being in the family of an Israelite. You can't come to this family doing like Solomon's wives did. Whatever you want. <laughs> Keeping your gods and your philosophies. That's the problem we have today. So scriptures deal with nations or nationality. Where are you from? Better sheet 4331 reading from the scriptures version. Then he washed his face and came out and controlled himself because he was he having an emotional moment here. He's seeing his brothers who threw him in the pit. Who behaved towards him unwisely. And hey, don't you know that all this is ministering to his mind? The vision, the dream that he had from the Most High? About the sun and the moon and the stars was going to bow down and play obeisance to him. He's watching this thing come right to pass. And he washed his face, came out, controlled himself, and said, look at this. Serve the food. We're going to pay attention to a custom here, okay? And they set him a place by himself. And them by themselves. And the Mizraites who ate with him by themselves so they didn't eat together this thought followed all the way up when the uh, emissary said you know how it is an unlawful thing for me who is the Yehudim to come into one or to be with one of another nation but when Yahweh made the Ruah available but Yahweh has showed me, Yahshua has showed me that I should not call any man, what, common or unclean, because now they all have an opportunity to be cleansed by the blood of Messiah. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because the prophecies came true about the curses about his people being scattered as the sands of the sea to the four winds of the earth. So you don't sit up and tell me you know what nation you from. All right. You may have attributes that show that you are from a particular region. But when Yahweh, see this is another reason why these people kick against the infeeling and the indwelling of the Ruah or the Holy Spirit. Because it's not man doing the picking and choosing. It's Yahweh. It's, it's, it's Yahshua himself putting his spirit in and said, this is who I approve of. This is my son. And these people that ain't filled with his Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, they're bitter. They're bitter because they may have tried to receive the Ruah and never got it, so they got offended. And now like the sons of the Hasatan that they are, they're going around trying to spread false doctrines to affect anyone who would have the opportunity to hear and believe and be a son of the Most High Yah. So the Spirit is the one who's doing the picking and choosing because Yah knows them that are His. So when you're filled with the Ruah, that's Yahweh said, okay now, I have given you my spirit. I have given you the earnest expectation. I have given you a down payment until it's time for 
the escrow to be due. When I come, I want to redeem what I purchased. That's why people don't understand this. And if you have not the spirit of Messiah, then you are none of his. So y'all can toy around this all you want. You better receive, that's what it said, the Holy Spirit. Instead of spending all the time trying to explain him away. Fools hate knowledge. And they sent him by a place by himself, and them by themselves, and the Miserites who ate with him by themselves, for the Miserites could not eat food with the Hebrews. It was a custom, a manner, and a law in their land to not eat with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination to the Egyptians. Y'all get this? You want to call this racism? Discrimination, all these new terms? We're dealing with nations. Words, words, concrete thinking, thinking of objects or ideas as specific items rather than an abstract representation of a more general concept as contrasted with abstract thinking for an example, perceiving that the chair and the table is individual useful items and not as members of a general class or furniture. Let's look at the word faithful. There's a guy online that does pretty good with this. Um, his name is uh, Beaner. I got he, he's got I got a book. He's called a mechanical translation. He does pretty good with actually getting to a more concrete perspective on these things. He actually does pretty good. Some things he miss out, but uh, you have to understand um, whether we all like it or not. You're going to be biased to your culture. Yes, you are. If somebody starts exalting their culture, there's something in you that's going to rise up to try to justify yours. You just don't want to be honest with yourself because you think exclusion is being practiced. Faithful. This is an abstract word because can you see faithful? Can you point to faithful? Can you tell me what it looks like? Can you put an image to it? When you try to think, when you think of the word faithful, put an image to faithful in your mind. You can't do it. But if I say water, do you have an image? Tree, do you have an image? Flower, that's concrete. There's no image available that you can with your senses equate to what faithful is. If you can't, draw us a picture. We'll wait for you. Y'all get it? This is an abstract word. Can you put an image? Something concrete in your mind when using this word. In other words, you can't do it. Why? Because it is abstract and cannot be discerned by the five senses. You cannot... All Hebrew words are rooted in concrete. This is the school you need to function by in order to understand this word. But first you need to understand that this word is heavily influenced by Western culture. So when you read the abstract words that they insert in place of concrete Hebraic words, then you'll begin to understand better, but you need to first have this in your mind. Y'all get it? Sorry, folks, we don't have the Hebrew scripture sitting in front of us. All Hebrew words rooted in concrete is school of thought, all right? Concrete is opposite of an abstract. It is concrete. It can be sensed by the five senses. You can, when it's concrete, you can either hear it you can smell it, you can taste it, you can touch it, or you can see it. That's how the Hebrew people function in life. Hebrews 2.17 says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful 
and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yah to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now, if we look at the Greek word faithful, look what it says. Trustworthy. Trustful. Believing. Faithfully. Sure, true. A person to show themselves faithful in the transaction of business. The execution of commands. Or the discharge of official duties. One who kept plighted faith worthy of trust and can be relied upon. 1 Samuel 2.35 And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is my, in my heart <clears throat> and in my mind. And I will build him a sure look at that word. A sure what? And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Hebrew, Amon, look at this. The word faithful is to support, to secure, to foster, a parent, nurse, figurative, render, firm, faithful, or trust, to believe, or be. The verb forms in the Hebrew, nifl, form, of the word faithful means to be secure, be or firm. The second is the hipful form, which is causative, make secure. Notice, make secure, which can be translated as support. The nipple form of the two passages of scripture we went over, faithful priest, a koneum, which means he's going to be a firm priest. Not going to the left or the right, doing all that is in the mind of the father. Also, sure house, bet nemia, or firm house. How's this house established unless it's established on the laws of the Most High? That, these are the verb forms in the Hebrew. We go to the, the word, word, W O R D word, logos in the Greek. Something said, including thought and implication, subject, discourse, uh, also reasoning. The mental faculty, the motive, extension, or uh, computation. That's the word, word logos, all right? The ba in the Hebrew is the word for word, all right? By implication, a matter is spoken, a thing, uh, adverbially, a cause, act, advice, a fair answer, X, such a thing. Hebraic thought. Look at this. An Israelite understands word is in itself not only sound, here, breath, but in reality, since the word is connected with its, its accomplishment, the bar. In other words, the word is connected with the accomplishment. You understand? Are y'all getting this? In modern Western thought, the American European term word is a poor translation for the Hebrew word the bar because for us, word never includes the deed within it. In the beginning was the deed. Function. Yahweh himself. Why? Because this deed creates I won't go a little bit deeper, all right? Once you can comprehend how to think Hebraic, when you read English or Greek words, your mind would think concrete. But this is something you have to study to get into in order to understand what's being said. Then you would be thinking right. An example of a concrete function of how the emissary, James, the apostle James, spoke to the people. What do it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he have what? People talk words all day long. They would have you to believe that they are the best disciple that ever walked the face of planet or listen to people. And have not what? Something that accompanies with deed. Can mental ascent save him? 
Because that's basically all that's going on. People today are saying, look, what do a prophet my brother into a man say he have mental assent? Meaning I agree. I'm faithful, okay? And have not the what? Deeds to back up what he's ascribing to. Can mental sin or faith save him? See, because it's all up here. That's what the Baptist and the Church of Christ taught us. Do you believe? And they never lived anything to show what they believed. Some of the most rebellious and disobedient people you ever see. You could tell no difference between them and the world. The only difference you could tell is, is they went to church. You can't tell they've been converted. This is the very reason why Americans are so cold hearted. They know how to give words of comfort. But action is not with them. Watch. Right action justifies right belief. Are y'all hear me? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be you warm and filled. Is it, those are words, ain't they? Yeah. Are those words? Yeah. That's why the only way you're going to know really truly who people are, you're going to have to watch function. You stop this mess being deceived with words. Because it puts your guard down because you have to understand that's how you function. You're always listening to words. You so deceived, if somebody say a good kind word to you, you don't even know when they whooping your ass. Right. Come on. But you love the words. Right. Come on. You pay attention to function, Amen. deeds, the doing, right. that accompanies what they say. Right. So look at this. Depart the peace be you won't be filled now with standing, give them not those, give them not those things which are what? Needful to the body. What do it profit? It's not bringing no profit. This is also why religious people have learned how to say these phrases and produce nothing. I will pray for you. When you have a need, you have means in your hands or a bank account, and yet you will not demonstrate right belief because of the way you think. If this brother and sister is destitute in food, instead of giving out all these wonderful words, just put your hand in your back pocket and pull out some Federal Reserve notes and give it to them. And if you can't do that, go to the store and buy some groceries and drop it off. But when we hear people hardships, we feel, feel sorry. We get emotion, we're loaded with abstract anyway. And the only answer we got from brother, we're going to pray for you. You selfish ass, inconsiderate individual. You cold hearted, cruel, wicked Gentile. You goyim from hell. You live in a plus nice life. You see your brother and your sister in need and you can't give up nothing of yourself. No wonder you're going to hell. Yep. You and all your deeds. Yes, sir. Everything you've amassed. Now we can understand James better. Watch this. Okay, pray for me. But give me what I need, brother. <laughs> oh, I want you to pray for me. But man, I'm telling you, I'm hurt. Give me something. I'm, you know, y'all know I'm all in in this American mindset. Uh huh. Ain't I? Ain't all in this American mindset. James two seventeen said, "Even so, faith believe. If it have not what works, if it don't have any deeds with it, is what? So you got walking dead people among you. <laughs> but we'll pray for you." Don't pray for me, man. We'll pray for you. 
How did Jesus say, you see a brother in need and you show up your bowels of compassion, how say you have the love of y'all in you? Function. You waiting for y'all to rain a miracle down in front of you, here you are an Israelite, and this miracle is in your hand. His deliverance is in your hand. Give. And it shall be given to you. Function. Concrete. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall men give function, concrete, into your bosom. See the difference between Hebrew thought, Hebraic thought, and Greek thought? See the difference? Yes, sir. The Greeks always say, we'll pray for you and provide nothing. Yeah. The Hebrews, they'll provide and pray for you. Yeah. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is what? Dead being alone. A man may say, you have faith. And I have faith. Show me your faith without your works. How are you going to do that? <laughs> because faith is all mental. It's all based on you being able to have the ability to agree. That's it. You just mentally put an agreement to a thought. But you do nothing. According to the way our people thought, the way y'all would get it, you are a deadbeat. You're not even an Israelite. You are deceived yourself. Show me your faith without thy works and I will show you my belief. My mental ascent, you're going to tell what's in my mind, what's in my heart by what I do. Again, this is the reason why a lot of people can't receive the Holy Spirit because they believe they got it mentally. And they go and read books and amass and stuff, but see, this is something that is given to you that produces a concrete action. The, the Ruah, the Holy Spirit, is something that can be sensed by the five senses. Oh. Sees you how faith wrought with his what? His right deeds. His right doing. This man was able to show how much he believed by his deeds. Not by words. Words, words, words. And by works, and by works was right belief made perfect. A lot of people would never be perfect. They're too damn lazy to do anything. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's just the truth. This is our culture. This is our society. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed Yah. Well, how do we know? How does Yah know that Abraham believed him? How does Abraham know that he believed him? When it was imputed unto him for righteousness, for he was called the friend of Yah. How? Because Yah said, take your son, your only son, action, put him on the altar, build it, deed, and sacrifice him. That's near and dear to the heart. You take your son and put him on the altar. Y'all finna check out real quick who do you love. Me or him. So if Abraham never had his faith, mental sent, his agreement, he's doing all good and fine until it came time for sacrifice. If he never had his faith tried, he wouldn't have known how much he loved Yah. 
he wouldn't even known he was his friend. Right. Right. That's why you're going to see Abraham in the kingdom. Designation, friend of Yah. He don't love his son above the father. Some of you, you love them damn bastards, don't you? In mindset. Because Hebrews don't have bastards. And let me, let me go if I get off on another subject here because, you know, this mind's already tore up in spaghetti anyway. Abraham could have been so-called following the voice of Yah and, and, and going wherever he said all day long. But he had to have his right belief. He had to have his faith tried. And you're not getting out of this earth without your faith being tried. Your faith must be tried so that you'll be worthy to function right in the kingdom. Your faith ain't tried, you ain't getting in the kingdom. You see then how that by what? And what does Christian, European, Greco-Roman philosophy say? Not by works. You don't even know what you're talking about. The works that the Apostle Saul was said, now that the Messiah, I'm going to break him down make it plain, all right? Now that the Messiah has come and been the ultimate sacrifice for you, and he is your high priest, you do not have to go to Jerusalem three times in a year. You don't have to bring an animal for blood sacrifice. Do you understand? And to get atonement for your sins. Because he is the ultimate atonement. He is the Passover. He is the unleavened bread. He is the first fruits of all them that believe. You understand? He is the Ruach or the Pentecost. And everyone that believes, meaning walk as he walks. Not middle of sin. Do as he do. Are children of Abraham. Y'all getting this? I'm trying to keep this simple. Am I keeping this simple? I'm trying my best. So you see that a man, how that works, a man is what? And not by mental assent or making a bunch of agreements in your head and mind. Or not by saying you have faith only. Likewise, also, not, was not Rahab the harlot justified by what? Everybody want to talk about her being a harlot, yet her name is written in the faith chapter. And, and you are whores and whoremongers, and your name ain't written no damn well. Yeah. All her whoredoms could not keep her from producing faith. Or right action, right works. When she had received the messengers and she sent them out another way, you'd have said, well, you ain't supposed to lie to the civil authorities. There it is. Your mind all screwed up in the head. Yeah. Hey, Rahab, you got the spies? Nope. What is that? I don't know. I ain't seen them. Did she lie? Come on. Look at you. Look at you out there. Y'all jacked up, ain't you? I'm going to tell you why she didn't lie. Because she was preserving the life of an Israelite. That's why she didn't lie. It's amazing. We live in a system to where they so-called, they would do everything they can, use every immoral way. They will lie and do anything they can to try to extract information out of you, but then they want to hold you to what they call righteousness. Right. Do you You know I got that from, right? I got that from the Three Stooges. I did. That's what they used to do when they went to They were funny. Those guys used to crack me up. So Rahab was justified by what? So you're actually going to see a whore, a woman that was previously a whore 
in the kingdom, and some of you are going to be thrust out in the outer darkness where there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, sir. Now go figure that one. Is there any unrighteousness with y'all? No. According to election, just by what she did and not by what she said, she proved what she believed. He said, man, let me tell you something. The Israelites are coming here, and they God is powerful. For as the body without the spirit is what? For the body without the what? Is what? I was talking to a dead man last night. <laughs> he got a body, but he ain't got no. He got the natural life that any animal got. But he don't have a Ruah HaKadosh. And you can hear the deadness of his speech. You can tell he's a Christian too. Brother Saint said, hell, he's a seven-day Adventist. He can listen to his speech. Why? Because the one thing he talked about was the Sabbath. And, and I'm going to tell you, brother, your problem is you had a bad experience with the Pentecostals because you're bitter against them because you couldn't let them go. His whole speech, the Pentecostals, the Pentecostals, Pentecostals. Why you want to give me the third degree about Pentecostals? I don't know nothing about no Pentecostals. The Pentecostals are all up in him. He can't get no deliverance because if he don't believe in the Holy Spirit, he don't believe no devils exist either then. For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without what? Is what? So you got all these people that act like they're in the faith, but yet they, they never produce any action, right action. Right function, right belief. These people, don't you be fooled. These people are, are, don't have the ruah in them. Dead faith. I can't help, brother, you got offended because you receive a false spirit. Paul told you about that. Receiving another spirit. <laughs> so we got a lot of people today that want to try to make you think that they believe, but they don't have right action, right deeds, right function. Faith without works is. So you're going to need pastors. That's going to teach you. Feed you with his knowledge and understanding. And this ain't something that you, you do like other people do. Go self anointing and appoint yourself. None of us became pastors. You know it's amazing. It's amazing. Because. Yah. Told, gave Jethro instruction. And said now I need for you to, to find some men. That we're going to put over this charge. That's order. They had heads of tribes. Y'all told them to make judges. But today, people read three scriptures. I'm a pastor. Ain't no man confirm nothing. Nobody evaluated your lifestyle. Nobody discerned your spirit. Nobody looked at you and proved you to see if you were worthy of this vocation. Isn't that something? Yes, sir. Now they are self-anointed and appointed without any proof at all. Right. But then, you know, later on in a renewed cover, I guess things change, right? The apostle Saul was chosen by Yahshua HaMashiach, who in his letters wrote and told these other people who he had ordained, I want you to go out and look out among you and find seven men of honor's report. Now that, I want you to ordain elders in every city. As I have commanded you, I have instructed you. What? You think that Paul was a good judge of character? Both naturally and spiritually? So he could let you know who the elders were then, right? Oh, but today... I'm a pastor. Who ordained you? Y'all did. You're a damn liar. See, they, they break all scripture, break all word, everything to... He did the same thing with, with Moses... Hadn't changed one bit his program. But now all of a we're supposed to make concessions for you because you're vainly puffed up in your mind. You'll be a fool to go and submit to some mess like that. Mm -hmm. The problem we're having today is trying to get you, Greek, Indo-European-minded people to think Hebrew-Semitic. 
I don't know why you despise that culture because that's who y'all's people were. Why despise that? Because that's the only people who he come back for. You got to be Israel. Y'all understand me, Israel? Do y'all understand? You got to be Israel. We're gonna get we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty right now, okay? James says in one twenty two, be ye doers of the what? Be ye what of the word? And not hearers only deceive me your own self. Do you realize how many people that, that the most high y'all purge from us through the spirit of the truth? That the only thing they would only thing they would do is tell you the word, but they wouldn't be doers themselves? They were lazy, lethargic, apathetic, selfish. Only live for themselves. Never givers. Never could give. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Because if, you only, if you're not doers and the only thing you do is come in here and you're not producing anything, then you're deceiving your own selves. The world as we know it today is not the same world as when Yahshua was here. Yahshua and the apostles spoke a folk Aramaic dialect of Hebrew which was sister to each other. The Romans were entrenched and ruling in the time of the Messiah. Do y'all understand? <clears throat> Listen very closely. They were immersed and lived in a world of images. Our Israelite brethren did. Which after 70 AD, the world shifted into Greek-speaking Hellenist world. Did y'all hear what I said? See, all that time, the world was, was pretty much dominated by Semitic people. The Babylonians, the Assyrians, oh man, the Medes and the Persians. Yes, they were. Christianity has been the religion of the Europeans ever since. 1 Maccabees 4, 20, 4, 4, 4, 1 Maccabees, 1st chapter, 41st verse. Listen to, in contrast, how this is happening today. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his old kingdom that all should be what? One people. What does America want us to be? One people. What does the new world order want? And everyone should leave his laws. Why? So that we can all get along. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. All the who agree? They don't have any, they don't have any, they, they, they don't have any commitment to the father anyway. So what if you don't like Zeus? Go to Neptune. So all the heathen agree. Yea, and many also of the wicked Israelites. Notice I put it in that wicked Israelites. What did they do? Consented to his what? And sacrifice unto what? Can't y'all tell last night that that man was not an Israelite? He was a deceiver and an imposter. And you got these wicked Israelites agreeing with this Christian. And don't even know what the hell they're doing. All because they agree that they disagree it with tongues. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? These wicked Israelites were considered religion and sacrifice unto what? So you had Israelites sacrificing unto idols and profane the what? And the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings because sacrifices were still going on because the temple was around and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the Sabbath and the festival days in other words you don't keep the seven day Sabbath no more Passover no more unleavened bread no more first fruits no more Pentecost no more trumpets, no more atonement, and no more tabernacles. But you do Christmas, you make a feast of Bacchus, 
and all the other gods that are available, and you do Easter, and you worship the sun. That's how you become one people in religion. So what has America done? I told you, Satan said, I can't beat them, so I'm going to join them. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually fuse together. We are the ones that are dominating and ruling the world right now, so we're going to take our philosophies, mix it with the Hebraic culture, we're going to translate and write the book the way we want to, and we're going to give it to the known world. And we took all the Israelites that would not comply, them we killed. And the ones we couldn't kill, they ran off in the caves in the exile. But we got enough of them that consented, and what we'll do is we'll make them out of preachers. And they'll preach our laws and our statutes and commandments. Y'all see this thing? Because remember, the Israel, remember the Israelites, they were in and under the rule of Rome. And the wicked Jews of that day them and, and, and Rome were just like this. They could, go to the, they could go to Pilate anytime, Herod and Pilate anytime they wanted. They had political power and might. And they used it too. They used it to put an innocent man to death. You think about that kind of influence that was. When the Romans tired of those wicked Jews or Yehudins, are you following me? They went and sacked the temple. Took the furniture of the temple, artifacts, everything belonged to the temple, and they took it up to Rome in that region in Athens and all these other areas, and they made monuments. Even more so after that, they made sure to make a complete desolation of the whole land. Constantine finished it off. Out of it was birth the bishops, the popes, or the Roman Catholic Church. Who took our book, our artifacts, our furniture to the temple, and fused their religion in with it and gave us Christianity. Now the whole world, the biggest religion in the whole world is Christianity. And it's starting to give way to Islam. Which Islam had 360 gods. They had a god for every day. And then when the prophet Muhammad, I still don't understand how he's a prophet since he never prophesied nothing, but they say he's a prophet. The prophet Muhammad came along and said there's only one god and his name is Allah. Where did he get that from? Because he learned that from the Yehudims. <laughs> he got mad that the Yehudims wouldn't follow him. Out of it come the Crusades, the Inquisitions, the Dark Ages, the wars. <laughs> right. come on. And out of it was birthed the Protestant Reformation. You know how much bloodshed was shed between the Catholics and the Protestants against each other for over 100 years? And you have no idea because you're here today. And you just accept Christianity. And you think because we're talking about the religion that you've consented to, that we're talking about the faith or the belief of the Israelites. You think we're talking about the Messiah. Because you've been Hellenized. So they forbid them to burn off and sacrifice, drink off in the temple. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people and set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Why do you think all these buildings throughout this land has got that penis sticking on top of the building? They call a phallic symbol. They penis worshipers. You call it's a steeple. You dumb, stupid nigger. And sacrifice, instead of clean animals, what do they do? 
swine's flesh and unclean beasts on the altars, on the Hebrew altars in the temple, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. We need to know what that word means. Profanation, an act of great disrespect shown to Yah, or to, sacri to sacred ideals, people, or things, the first book of Maccabees tells us that profanation of the temple of Jerusalem by Antiochus, was that the fifth, the sixth, the fourth, or the fourth of Epiphanes in 167. Synonym, different defilement, desecration, impiedment, irrelevance, profanation, sacrilege. They just desecrate the whole thing. To the end, what is to the end of all this? That they might forget the law. What does Christianity come and teach you? We are not under that law. The law is done away with. You don't care that, the Jesus, that Jesus said, the Messiah said in Matthew 5. Think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy. I came to fulfill. But you don't care because your religion that you consented to or your forefathers did a long, long time ago said we're not under that law and we don't have to keep that law. We're free from the law. What? You're free from righteousness? Yeah. You're free from having one yah? Yeah. You're free, you're, you're free from, from um, uh, making sure you can't have a plethora of idols around? You're free from honor? You're free from bearing false witness? You mean tell me you can just sin willfully? Yeah. What a mind. Yes, to the end, they, the... the, the the Greeks and the Romans did this to the end that, so that the Israelites might forget the law and to change the what? Ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should what? Now what are y'all going to do when, when this land starts passing laws? And they're going to do it. Because the things that will happen in history, it, it is going to happen again. What are you going to do when they tell you unless you, you can, you has no way, there's no way you're going to be able to buy or sell unless you receive this mark. Right. What are you going to do then? You're going to justify yourself and say you got to eat? Go ahead and get your ticket to hell. Nope. No, For blaspheming the name of Yah Come on. and his Messiah. Yahshua the Mashiach. Come on. Uh -oh. Because remember, in this time, they're not going to put you to death in that region. They're going to cause you. And a lot of your cause is because you're too stupid to obey the commandments. Yeah. Here you are, you got passed. He got, I got called a false prophet last night. I ain't even a prophet. How can you be a false prophet when you're not a prophet? I try to figure that out. It didn't lodge in my head too much long, but I did try to figure it out. He called me pastor all night long, then he called me a false prophet. That's right. We in this generation where you can be a prophet one minute, a pastor the next minute, a evangelist one minute, a teacher the next minute. I mean, you, you, you just all of them rolled up in one. <laughs> Prophesying, prophet lying, doing everything else. <clears throat> but this attitude is coming on this land. Now, who do you think going to be in, in better situation or better prepared? For a wave like this, except those who, who have obeyed the commandments by coming out of her. Y'all always prepare a table in the wilderness, but I guess he's going to change his whole program and pre prepare a table in New York City. In Philadelphia, New Jersey. It's amazing, isn't it? Come out of her, my people. And whosoever should not do according to the commandment, the king said he should die. And of course, to make sure this religion is still functioning today, the state has its officers, 501c3, to make sure the religion of Christianity and all of its Roman idolatry is preached, taught, and carried throughout this stolen land. They give them privileges. We exempt you from taxes. 
You be an officer for us, you don't have to pay tax on your land. You ought to pay tax on your vehicles. You ought to pay tax on your electric bill, your light bill, your phone bill, fuel bill. Hell, you can even go shopping and don't even have to pay tax. You can be tax free. Everywhere we go, these people trip out. They trip out when they see that uh, at times when we have to use a, a church, the church check or the account says the Church of Jesus Christ. Because that's what we set up a long, long time ago, right? They go, uh, is this tax exempt? I go, no, ma'am. I'm not exempt from taxes. You can look at me and tell I'm taxed. They say, ain't you a church? I say, yeah, but your establishment will not honor and recognize me as an set apart, even though it's written on the books and laws of this land. But unless I go and get the Romans paperwork that says 501c3, your business is not going to recognize it. So to save a lot of steps, I just pay the taxes. Really? I said, yeah, I'm going to dig into my pocket and fish out some Federal Reserve notes for you. Did not Jesus pay the taxes? Go, go, go get that, go, go get that self out of that fish mouth. And all you tax objectors. So that's why, I mean, these people getting privileges, cutbacks, kickbacks. Verse 51, in the self-same manner, he wrote to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers. You know who they are? Mayors, sheriffs, governors, senators, police, preachers. It goes all the way down here. You know how much power and influence is behind every pulpit? I'm one of the few preachers, preachers that's doing everything I can to cram information in you. Cram knowledge in you. And in the same manner, he wrote his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. In other words, you ain't sacrificing no more of these bulls and bullocks. You're going to be sacrificing swine. And of course, what is America wholly given all over to? Matter of fact, they, they, you know, the priests used to eat a sacrifice. So swine are sacrificed all over this world. Swine is, is, is the new white meat. These Romans and Greeks, boy, they love their swine. And now you got Hebrews, wicked ones, wicked Israelites, that rush to the barbecue joints. You should have seen um, when we was down there at, at Elder Bullock's uh, home going. And I was telling these people who they are. You could clearly see, clearly see the ones who lived a clean life. And the ones who were suffering because of the stuff they chose to put in their mouth. The ones that were suffering, they come in, they look. Big as houses. Sitting in chairs. Let me see your chair for a second, brother. There. They said, come in, sit in chair. Everybody got to help. You got four or five people trying to help us sit down. <laughs> How y'all like that for a demonstration? <laughs> y'all think I'm kidding? That's how they were sitting down. If I'm going to demonstrate this thing, y'all, I got to do this thing right. Y'all, y'all be all right. Don't worry about it. Sister Lisa, she'll straighten me out. She'll bend me and twist me. <laughs> y'all hear me? Yes, sir. And then I was talking to the, the other preacher there. He said, hey, he says, look, look at my family. I said, how old are you? He's said, 74 years old. I said, you 74? I mean, he's, he's Elder Bullock's older brother. You 70. He said, yeah, clean living. I don't eat that swine. I don't eat that swine and I exercise. (laughs) 
and his sister just one year older than him. Now, I'm not making them, I'm just telling them, I'm stating facts. I'm telling the truth. And people get mad at me for loving them more than they hate themselves. And now we live in this culture and we are literally immersed in this society to where you can't even hardly buy any damn thing that ain't touched by their pig. They put pig, bacon wrapped around the steaks. Just the other day I was in a restaurant and stuff. I said, hey, that's a sweet potato. Now we don't eat no pork or nothing like it, right? Well, you can't eat sweet potato. Why? Because they, 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 they base it in pig juice. You can't get away from it. They got barbecue joints down here. You can smell it. Then you wonder why you got silence problems. You wonder why you got a disease because you're doing what the Torah told you not to do. The Torah said, leave the fat alone. And you love sucking on that fat. Leave the blood alone. You love your rare, rare, and medium rare. We have laws, Hebrews. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit everyone that forsook the law and so they committed evils in the what? They committed what in the land? They committed evils in the land of Jerusalem. And drove the Israelites into secret places. These were the good ones. And whithersoever they could flee, they succor. The word succor means wherever they could get assistance and support in times of hardship and distress. All of you, see, Shofar Mountain is off the grid. Very few people know where it is. We all may have to go to Shofar Mountain one day. And if you can't live a sacrifice life, and we live a whole lot better than they do at Shofar Mountain. We started off like that, but not even that rough we started off. But we, man, we live rough. How are you going to fulfill the scripture that says be content with such things as you have? If we had to flee from this place and flee to one of these other communities that's in the wilderness, you go there and bring your mama and complaining with you because you've been Hellenized. You got rights. I just can't do this. I can't do that. No, but you can keep your ass here. Because we ain't putting up with no murmuring and complaining. What we read in the book? Neither murmur ye as they that will destroy by the destroyers. Second Maccabees 6 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens. To compel the Jews to depart from the, from the laws. What does Christianity do? Compel you to depart from the laws. T tell me if I'm lying. Of their fathers and to not live after the laws of Yahweh. Sent an old man from Athens. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter. See what Paul was dealing with in Acts? Olympus. And that in Gerson of Jupiter. The defender of strangers. <laughs> now y'all ain't that. He they are in the temple and are setting up Jupiter. Of course you know who the Roman Catholic Church called Jupiter don't you? That statue of Peter. As they did desire that dwell in that place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. We talking about the place to where three times in a year they had a high priest there that would do sacrifice. We talking about the, the holy place, the most holy place, and the holy of holies. We talking about the place where the menorah is, the showbread is, the ark of the covenant. Look what's happening. Look what these Gentiles are doing. And these Gentiles dallied with harlots 
and had to do with women, they are having sexual orgies in the temple. Within the circuit of the holy places and besides that bought in the things that were not lawful. They tore down the curtain and everything and went in and just having a Greek time. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbid, swine flesh. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep what days? Look how hard that this nation and this world is coming against us even for trying to go out and carve out an honest living. You can't even hardly find a job day that will allow you to keep the Sabbath. Great sacrifices. Or the ancient feasts, or to profess himself to be a Jew. Don't need you even dare call yourself a Yehudim. Remember, you're supposed to be one people. And in, that, and in the day of the king's birth every month, they were bought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Yehudins were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. They didn't even use their own people. They made them get in there just to make sure that they with them. Made them eat and made them carry, like in a parade, all this ivory and all this pomp for the celebration of Bacchus. Israelites do it. Hell. Man, they getting ready to have a Christmas parade. You know what we do? We go pull up a car. Tailgate. Watch the floats. A feast to Saturnalia. I tell you, we something else. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifice. Have y'all noticed how the people of this land act very strange towards us as a people? When they see how we dress and carry ourselves. Have y'all noticed that? They don't respect and honor us. You can feel the spirit coming off of them how they hate us. They talk about us. They point fingers at you when you go out. Because you're different than the people of these lands. You don't look like the people of these lands. You're not the people of these lands. You belong to Yah. And he confirmed that you do belong to him because he gave you his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So therefore you are different. You have a different spirit in you than the people of these lands. You understand? Yes, and they get upset when we don't go run to their same fashions. We leaving you alone. Leave us alone. What's the big deal? See what it is, there's something in them that they know that we're right. Huh? And their conscience condemns them. Because they can't really feel free as long as we are there as a reminder you are in transgression without even saying a word. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. For there were two women bought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led around about the city, the babes hanging at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. Being discovered by Philip, were all burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. And people, they make excuses to break the Sabbath all day long day. It, today, it don't mean nothing for us to... to, to, to <laughs> we are far from that type of character. We are far from that type of honor. That's why I stay on us as a people. We wicked as hell. We don't know. We're religious, but we're wicked as hell. 
We don't have the same convictions as they had then. We're not as serious about this as they were. There's a, we're a few left in number that have that kind of integrity. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. Because y'all love those whom he chastens. And there ain't no way that our forefathers and ancestors and all these people are going to transgress against y'all's law, spurn his statutes and commandments, and think that the next generation and the generation after that are not going to get chastened for it. That's why I keep telling you. These folks out here, they mad at these nations for chasing. That's y'all's chasing it on us. They're fighting against the Father. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. I tell you clearly, everything that, that our people got, we deserved. You ain't going to get me to be bitter against the Father. He does all things well. For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time but forth with punishment. In other words, payday coming to all of these Americans. Oh, yeah. See, the people who did all these atrocities, they're dead and gone. But you are the children of those people and you're going to get it. That's how the most I reckon. Yes, For not as with other nations whom Yahshua patiently forbear to punish till they come to the fullness of their sins who dealeth he with us. Lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards he should take vengeance of us. And therefore he never withdrawed his mercy from us and though he punished with adversary, adversity yet doeth he never forsake his people. See, all this punishment and everything is there to meant to humble us. And we need humbling. Yes, we do, too. We are far from a people of humility. We are very arrogant, prideful, egotistical, opinionated, self-willed people. Yes, we are. Because we, we behave just like the nations around us. We've forgotten who we were. That's why the Most High keeps thundering restoration. And the restitution of all things is at hand. Jesus Christ is coming. You better get prepared because you're getting ready to meet your creator. And we are closer today than what we were yesterday. And we're closer today when this was written. Dabarim 427, and Yahweh shall scatter you among the nations. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether Yahweh shall lead you. And there you shall serve other Elohims, other mighty ones, the works of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Now, somebody convinced me that this land is not full and wholly given over to idolatry. They got gods all over the place. They even got gods hanging on crosses to play on your abstract feelings and emotions. That you can't even make sense of. But if from this thou shalt seek Yahweh thy Elohim, thou shalt find him, if thou shalt seek him with all thy what? I'm telling you right now, Pastor Rachab Dowell, Ben, son of Dawid Yahshua Hamashiach. How you like that? Cover all bases. I am seeking him with all my heart. I ain't got time to play games. Now I do play games. I was down there playing Madden the other day. I was, I'm so bad at it. <laughs> I, I play on the level that's under rookie. First time I played them games like it, and who, can, who, who knows what, man? Them things move too fast. But that's the reason why I spend so much time in study. Because if I'm going to show I love the Father, I got to feed his lambs. 
I have to feed his sheep. So you should know my level of love for the Father and you based on the level you're being fed. And a lot, I keep getting bored, Pastor. Man, that's a plate, man. It's going to take a long time to eat that one. But in his word, thou shalt seek Yahweh Elohim. Thou shalt find him if thou wilt seek him with all thy heart and all thy soul. Thou art, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the what? Latter days. Ain't that something how prophecy is? It's way over in Torah. If you turn to Yahweh, your Elohim, and shall be obedient unto his what? I, the hardest thing I get is, is I can tell you all day long what y'all's word is, but I watch you in function. Your heart is above him. You don't want to obey a damn thing he says. <laughs> I can tell you clearly what he said. And you got people around there that's showing you the example that his law can't, they're not too tough. They can be obeyed. Well, you don't understand. Y'all do too. I understand the person that's sin is going to hell. See, because all these Greek gods in this philosophy of this world gives us opinions and gives us buys and judgment is not executed speedily, we think we're getting by. We think y'all was a fool. He going to grade on a curve just for you. You know what? If he punished Moshe, And David. And you're going to see these people sitting on the 12 thrones. I mean, you're going to see these sitting on a, I mean, a high place up in the kingdom. And he punished them and did not forbear. What makes you think you're going to get a pass? How do you compute and calculate you're going to get a pass? I don't understand it. Where is grace? Yeah, okay, you know what grace is, all right. For Yahweh the Elohim is a merciful Elohim. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. Constantine had a vision that he could win a battle against Maximus under the sign of the cross. And when he succeeded, he legalized Christianity. And that was a sign he saw in the sky. And out of it came Christianity. So Christianity, that go your first pope. World, here's your Jesus. This is the Ark of Titus. He, it's got all the victories on this monument right here. And you know where the victory against the Hebrews is? Right here. Right there. He even got the menorah in that and everything, showing them them Romans carrying it in the procession, having a victory parade for sacking our temple because we were disobedient. And I thank Yah that he has purged the rebels from among us. Because when he purged rebels from among us, that means we're in his good graces and mercies. And we won't be receiving the other end of judgment. That's what's going on. They, look, they even called them in there real good and even got them look, bowing down to it. That's what's ruling the world today. Happy Saturnalia. Huh? You know what that is? Isn't that something? Our, Jeremiah wrote about this. In this country, I guarantee you're going to see who they serve again at the end of this year. Of this Roman year. They're going to do it again. All across this land. And look what's back there in the background. This thing goes all the way back to Mizraim. How in the world did, the, did it get all the way up into the Americans? This thing has stood the test of time. And now. These penises are all over these churches. And they call them steeples. 
so they can deceive you from the real meaning. It's a phallic symbol. Learn not the ways of the heathen. So heathens put up Christmas trees. Here is a Gentile telling you, <laughs> warning you that the Christmas tree is pagan. It's an idol. She, she got to be she got to be converting to an Israelite. Isn't that an honorable thing? And you know what the people would do? You messing up our holiday. This whole land is given over to idolatry. That's the Parthenon down here in Nashville, Tennessee. Greek Parthenon. There it is. Look at all the statues and everything. This big old thing is down there in Nashville, Tennessee. Got dragons at the four corners. And watch this. You want to know what's inside of it? No, this is the same Parthenon that's over in, that's, this is in Athens. You know what's inside of it? This pagan, pagan goddess called Athena, and she's holding Nike in her hand. That is what's on the inside of this building. It's, it's right back here. That is in Nashville, Tennessee. They have built a temple and a shrine and an altar to the goddess Athena. And you don't think that America is wholly given over to idolatry? Huh? We're in our enemy's land. Like the book says. Got a shield and a snake right there. And Nike right here. And all the dignitaries have banquets in front of this thing. I'd hate to go in there. I'd be tempted to take a sword or something and start beating the dang thing. Then they'll get me for destruction of public property. I'm trying to save these people from my dollars and they're going to throw me in jail. <laughs> Call me a friend's lunatic. Christianity, in fact, is the greatest deception upon man. It's Satan's religion preaching another Jesus. Who are the Hebrews? What did Paul function in thought? Or how did he, Paul? We're going to finish on this Philippians 3 1. Finally, my brother, rejoicing, Yahshua, to write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Look what Paul said. Look how he talked. Paul would be rejected today, wouldn't he? You stop calling me names. Beware of dogs. He must learn that from the Messiah. Beware of evil workers. Where are they all going to function at? We just heard a dog and evil worker last night. Beware of the concision. That means the people who cut and mutilate themselves. For we are the circumcision which worship Yah in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. He said, you want trust in your flesh? Well, I don't know. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. Ain't nobody got that kind of pedigree. So when we sing a song, we are Hebrews, we are Hebrews. Know exactly who we are. And we're the only people that's going to be saved on this earth. The ones who are following y'all's laws statues and commandments you folks in Christianity you're in trouble and you folks in these other philosophies I tell you that threw me last night when I figured out here's a guy that is no doubt he's a Christian are you following me and you got these deceived Hebrews calling in and none of them ain't never had the experience eh, no they try to capitalize trying to put uh, uh, try to put down the experience in place of the word 
But then the kingdom of Yah is not in word, but in what? Power. And I didn't hear him utter one Hebrew word. I'm like, man, I got to actually put his own words back on him. Nah, man, according to you, the whole world is filled with the Holy Spirit. We all speak in tongues. See, they believe in that doctrine. Even the devil going to be saved. Serpent seed doctrine. Israel, y'all thank y'all for what he's doing with y'all. You are the all scouring of the earth. You can't ever expect for people to walk with you and be in agreement because they ain't going to do it. There's only going to be a few of us. That's it. And you rejoice. And you be glad. Because there's only going to be a few of us. You should be glad that your name is written down. My suggestion to you is that you strive to enter in at the straight gate. And continue to keep striving and don't stop striving. You be as holy as you can be. And you seek the Father's face at all times. You teach your children every day, all that you can, the ways of the Father. So they will be embedded in them. You understand? I taught my children the ways of the Father, but boy, I tell you what, this world's got a strong pool. It takes no prisoners, only victims. I'm serious. And mind you, that's growing up in a home where I taught them the word. And if they can be taken by this world, don't you be too sure of yourself, lest you fall. Because this world is strong. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The only difference is I'm not Eli. I'm answerable to him. Same one you answerable to. Hallelujah. Y'all be encouraged. Let us stand. I will, y'all, we thank you for all things. Pray these things sink deep down in our hearts. In my name of Yahshua, I'm a shik. Amen. We got tabernacles coming up. Boy, well, first we got Day of Atonement. You got that message, Shabbat. Uh, it's on, um, I think it's Friday. Yeah, Friday morning. All right, we'll, we'll take it Friday morning. Friday morning, then we have Shabbat. So next six day morning, you know, we'll be here for Day of Atonement. All right, that's what you world call Friday. All right, and then we of course we have Shabbat. All right, so a lot of our family are traveling from all over to be here with us in the Feast of Tabernacles, and we're so elated and excited and glad to um, actually um, see you. As a matter of fact, we're so late and excited, we went out and ordered some more carpet so that the carpet can stand on back some more. We can put that in and you can have a little bit more plush and we order 50 more of these nice plush chairs for y'all to uh, sit in and throw all over the place, do deliverance and everything else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. King coming.